Hi there, and welcome to Pimp Your Science. Now we are going to talk about team building in life sciences. What I am going to share now with you is a strategy of how to build a highly functioning and productive scientific team out of your group. But before I lead you through the phases of team development, let's look briefly at some traditional ways scientific groups are taking to promote team building. So, strategy number one is to do the off-site team building. You and your group will organize a rafting weekend or organize games that demonstrate the importance of teamwork. While all these exercises are useful, the problem always arises once you are back into the lab. How to translate this knowledge into the lab environment? Strategy number two would be to organize a workshop in which an expert will present the theory behind team building and prepare games and exercise to promote understanding of team building process and its importance. But again, once in the lab your people will have problem how to implement this knowledge in a real situation and daily work. Strategy number three would be to recruit a lab manager. However, from my experience, lab managers are, if not technicians, then technicians with PhDs, with no knowledge in human resource management or development. Ok then, you may decide to hire an HR specialist. While this would be a good idea, MBA graduates usually have little idea of research process and academic system. Hence your solution might be to hire an MBA PhD. And while this would be the best option, if you could afford it, there would be a question if this person would have the authority to lead your group. And probably not. So who is going to make a team out of your group? Well, you. A group leader, professor or PI has to do it. And I know that you are overwhelmed with work and that you don't want additional obligation. But just remember, when the team becomes functional, it will be self-directed unit. It will be autonomous and the direct supervision will not be needed. So it will actually, at the end, free a lot of your time. Moreover, you are the only one that has the authority to do it. If you show that you are willing to do it and you think this is important, your group members will follow you because it will become important for them. You have also resources for that. Also, as I just mentioned, you actually have the highest interest. While a postdoc would care only about a first authorship on a nature paper, you actually may care about this nature paper and 10 more. So it is your highest priority and you should also actually clarify to all your group members why they should also have this priority as well. Finally, you are the only no one that knows how the coffee should taste. So you can actually judge the end product the best. So, you decided to build a team. Great decision. But you may be now a bit skeptical because you don't know what to do or what to expect. Don't worry. I'm going now to lead you quickly through some very important things to, that you have to know when thinking about team development. The first thing you have to understand and acknowledge is that any team while going through its development has to go through four phases. The first of which is forming followed by the very exciting one called storming. If the team goes out of the storming and eventually will if the leadership is good, it will come to the norming phase and finally end up in performing phase. The performing phase can be only compared with the F1 racing team performance. And this is exactly where you want to be. However, don't be surprised to observe that the performance throughout development fluctuates and it depends heavily in which phase your team is. So let us look now at each of these phases in details. The forming phase. In forming phase, members move from a personal to a group focus. It is a very peaceful phase because members desire to be accepted by others. They just join the group, so the harmony is prevailing. Also, members are assessing strengths of other members, their goals, their motives, and everything that is needed to start or su successfully collaboration. In this phase, you as a group leader have a quite important role. 
You are now choosing the people for your group and for your team. If you are just starting your own lab, now you can start choosing from the applicants not only based on their scientific achievements or the publication record, but also based on interviews, reference letters and what we talked about before, psychometric testing. Now you can choose the best mix so you have a functional team. If you are already established group leader and have a group, you can actually start assigning members to a team. If you have a quite a big group, you can actually make sub-teams and then again, based on psychometric testings, you can make the best mix of people in each team. However, the most important thing you should do at this stage is to empower your team. You should assign the whole task for your team, from goal setting to publishing papers. This is all their responsibility from now on. The team can select their work methods, they can assign members to tasks, so who will going to do what, and schedule its activities. You are not going to influence that and you need to make that clear. Finally, team authority and responsibility are accepted by the team members. So everybody accepts that they are responsible for the team's success, but also for the team failure. What you as a group leader should definitely do on a kickoff meeting of your group is to create a sense of purpose. So the team is not there only to produce papers or to make a method or a process more efficient. It's there to change the world. You need to give a vision. You, can, you need to share a vision with your team. And to speed all things a bit up, you need to create a sense of urgency. The cure for Alzheimer is needed yesterday for example. The second phase is storming. As you can vividly see on this picture, in this phase the team members are engaged in the competitive process of getting their ideas heard. They will compete who has the best idea. And this competition may be actually quite a heavy one. But this is important because team will articulate its goals through this process. Of course, you are there to guide them, help them, but it's their job to articulate a goal, team goals. Finally, you should not be surprised to see that the performance of your group or team members is dropping. I mean, come on, they are fighting. However, in this phase, the natural team leader emerges. So let us here briefly define and clarify the roles of a team and a group leader. In the beginning, the challenge for any group leader, presented here as a rabbit in a black coat and sunglasses in the middle, is to make from the group of people in the lab a functional team. However, maybe you have noticed, or maybe you didn't, but actually on the picture on the right, the group leader is missing. So where is he or she? Actually, the group leader step aside. If the team is developed properly, it will actually function as a self-autonomous unit. So there will be no need for direct supervision anymore. And that's cool news for any group leader. Because now you can start building few teams around yourself and all of them will work self-autonomously. Of course, the goals of each team will be set up with you, together with you, and you will uh, oversight they work and if they reach the milestone you set, however, there is no need for direct supervision. Instead, in each team, there will be a person rising to a team leader. As depicted here in this example, in each team, there is a different person with a different skill set that rises to a team leader. And this does not need to be necessarily hierarchical. So you don't need to have a senior postdoc as a team leader, maybe a PhD or a technician have the necessary skills in that team to become a team leader. The role of team leader is to organize day-to-day -day business, to motivate people if needed, to coordinate work of team members. So all these things are now off the shoulders of the group leader. Team leader is neither the first author on the paper or the last author on the paper. This is the person that just takes everything, that takes care that everything function well. I should emphasize here, however, 
To make team building process going smoothly, you need to define teamwork rewards. For example, you can organize a hiking or a camping with your people, or award them with some extra days off, or buy a coffee machine for the lab. Believe me, free coffee is always appreciated. Or invite everybody to a dinner or a barbecue or something like that. However, it is very important, it is crucial that all these rewards are linked to the teamwork and reaching the milestones defined by the team. Finally, your team, after a bit of a struggle, quite a bit of fight, will come to the norming phase. And this is the phase where team members are committed to the group. They have a strong commitment because their goals are set. They all agreed on smart goals and have a clear plan how to reach it. All that was done in the storming phase. Now the members will take responsibility for their task. Everybody will know what to do. So your responsibility or your role as a group leader is going to diminish. Your team leader from now on will take the charge in leading this team. Finally, as the title says, the norms are going to be unheard. So the norms by which the team is going to work. And we talked about how you or the team uh, leader can actually steer the norms. So use this opportunity now. In norming phase, group harmony and agreement among members is very strong. And this is of course good. However, this could also lead to a drop in a group performance. And you as a group leader, as somebody that stands outside of the group, can observe the silent killers of the group performance. You should prevent groupthink. We will talk more about groupthink, but here just to mention that the groupthink arises when the group compromise over a solution and not critically evaluate different paths. And they of course do that to keep harmony uh, going. The other thing that you should keep an eye on is to sustain a goal focus. We know that in science uh, discoveries lead to different discoveries, new findings, and it's quite easy to get off the uh, agreed path. So the group again, to keep the harmony, may agree to leave the path. And that's your job. Your job is to keep them uh, straight to their defined goals. The reward for all your effort and taking care of your people is that your group will finish in the performing phase. Performing phase is the phase where actual performance reaches the potential performance of your group. Members are all involved in the project and highly motivated to contribute. Collaboration is a key word in everybody's mind. And there is no need for supervision, so you can either relax a bit or just start building a new team. In summary, if you decided to follow the steps and build yourself a great team, if you have patience and are committed to the task, and most importantly, if you are willing to share some of your power with your team, then one day you will wake up and open the door of your lab and be amazed how your group looked before and how your team works and looks now. And isn't this the dream worth the effort?